so I think to continue the 70s, we can just kind of talk about some of the other actors or obscure shows that kind of close out this era. Yeah. I was thinking about that too. The Robotic Stooges. Oh, yes. Stooges. was This is a real thing. All right. This was a real thing. Yep. They took the three Stooges and made them cyborgs. But they, wow. they, they didn't sound like the three Stooges. Couldn't afford to. <laughs> they could, I mean, they had... I know Frank Welker did the voice of uh, Curly. Wow. But it was like... It wasn't like the three Stooges that we grew up on, you know. Wasn't much like spread out. We gotta find a bad guy. Hey, Mo, look what I found here. You know, and Curly go, whoa, 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 whoa. you know, it wasn't like that. It was just like you know, they were superheroes. Wow. You know, <laughs> it was basically Dynamite times three. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Um, it's a spinoff of the Skatebirds. It claims. Yeah. Yep. It was. Skatebirds oh, were basically a roller skating trio. <laughs> Was it a trio or a quartet? I keep thinking it was a trio or a quartet. It looks like a quartet, but it's clear. Yeah, I think it was a quartet. Yeah, and they were kind of like the the bastard kids of the banana splits when you think about it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know? But, yeah, and, and the 70s kind of tails off because then all of a sudden you have, like, Mighty Man and Yuck Yuck. Mighty Man and Yuck oh, Yuck. Oh, yes. Yeah. Um, what was the one? Fa- what was the one with the wolf? Um, uh, Fang Face. Fang Face. Fang, Fang face. face. That's bridging into the eighties almost. That's where we're starting to see everything start to come around. You know, they're 80s. all doing things everyday people do, like own a nightclub yeah. or have a police force or have a giant street, and one of them's a mayor. It's just so wild how they're like. There's not really any social commentary in these cartoons like some of them would do, like with the Super Friends and all that. But it's interesting how, like, these guys are kind of more just, hey, well, the one, know, we're hanging out. Yeah. Cool. Well, the one that laid it on heavy with social comment was, you know, Bill Cosby with the Cosby Show. And there you, know, you go. That album. And <laughs> That's the irony one, for you. The one episode that always stands out to me is the one where the kid gets shot. And no, and I, I swear to God, I remember watching that episode. And, you know, it's like Cosby going, you know, well, they learned a lesson that a life is precious. And, you know, and, all, and I was like, oh, my God, I didn't want to see a kid get shot on TV. <laughs> but, you know, but that's how it was. You know, he wanted to he wanted to tell people what was going on in the world, you know. Mm-hmm. So there wasn't really, you know, social, like you said, social commentary. Eh, I wanted to see people getting hit in the face with pies and stuff like that you know it was interesting i shared with uh jj (laughs) you might find this funny tom i shared him with him just a bizarre list just showing you know unfunny or very dark moments of otherwise often funny sitcoms (laughs) yeah very special episodes right (laughs) well someone would get shot or someone would have a baby and i can't i forgot about what was it one of the other giant ones I think B. Arthur was on before Golden Girls that died abortion. Maud, yeah. she had the abortion. It was like, man, it was like, and yeah. no one wants to talk about well, anything in fiction unless it's something that most people can resonate with, like you're yeah. living in the hood or you got an activist father or something. I don't know. Well, the, you know, the thing is, is that when we were kids, you know, all that stuff was going to come down the pike. You know, and there were some shows in the 70s that were going to, you know, teach us morals and stuff like that, you know. But, you know, Saturday mornings, we wanted to watch, you know, cartoons. We wanted to escape escape. before you turned it off and had to go outside and, you know, play on the poker stick or the swing set. (laughs) Yeah. Or in my case, I had a, you know, I had the the tree ladder from Tarzan. Oh, wow. To the top. Yeah. It was like, my dad's like, I got you a Tarzan tree ladder. And I'm thinking to myself, I'm going to be like Tarzan. And I get on it. And it's like five minutes. I'm like, okay, dad, I'm done. You know. It's wild how everyone basically wants to swing around or jump endlessly among trees like Tarzan the ape man. Yeah. If not fly like (laughs) Superman. (laughs) I can most common ones. Or or fall like Batman. (laughs) Yeah. Right. Or, yeah, be a gadget man like Batman with a giant... (laughs) Now, 
the thing the thing I've noticed about like the eighties, it's that when I was looking back on this before I was before we were doing this, a lot of it was like excess, you know? It was either uh, you know, based on a popular hit movie or show at the time and they had an animated companion. Or a toy. Yeah, or a toy. Mm. So yeah, it was like for all the G.I. Joes and Transformers that Hasbro ruled, then you kind of have to have something to accommodate every other Ghostbusters or Star Wars type franchise. So it, like you say, it was often leftover ideas or just unproduced stuff just now being made and they had to make it all hip and edgy for the 80s. Yeah. Well, the one thing, uh, go ahead. Mr. Well, the one T thing had one, is, Chuck Norris had one. <laughs> yeah. But the thing that gets me is like, I was looking at like stuff from like 80, 81, 82. And that's when everything starts to like kind of like fizzle out a little bit. Because you remember, we had, if anybody remembers, there was Drack Pack. Oh, Drack yes. Pack, Meat, one of Drack my favorites. Pack, uh, meatballs and spaghetti, um, oh, wow. Pandemonium. They, and this is the one that gets me. I remember this, and I remember to this day, I made a joke about it one time in my stand-up set when I was doing stand-up. I said, I watched Gilligan's Planet, and I swear to yes. God, it's like, it's one of the last shows Jim Backus did, and I and I, I said, I think he was technically dead when they did it, because he said, <laughs> because they do, they do, they do, like, they do, you know, they have all the voices, like Alan Hale still has the same, you know, Russell Johnson, uh, Marianne, <laughs> Ginger, and it comes to it comes to like Jim Backus like we came upon a, a trancing star, and it's like oh my god, Jim, Jim, you know. You always wondered if the recording had looped poorly <laughs> on recast. <laughs> you know how sick he nope. was. You know? That's yeah, Tim on his deathbed, and they didn't want they weren't going to accept no because without his name, star power, it wasn't going to even get put on the air. But this is basically. Yeah, yeah, you kind of see a lot of this in the 90s where you yeah, see but, more and more of that. We'll make a movie or a show based on a toy gimmick or just a giant celebrity. Whoever has a talk show yeah. or a NFL athlete who's endorsed their brand with, you know, T-shirt or sneaker companies, yeah, they, they get a chance. They get at least one fling of the ring. They'll love it because they don't got to work hard to get their SAG card. They just play themselves. Yeah, yeah and I see... I, Maybe I'm wrong on this, but I thought there was a, I thought there was a Gilligan's Island cartoon that led yes. into, yeah, Gilligan's Planet. The Gilligan's Island show was on in the seventies. If I saw it, it was but a minute. It must have been yeah. like early Adult Swim like yeah. programming. Yeah, and they didn't have any it other was, edgy things after Space Ghost, and they just want to play it. <laughs> it was Filmation, and Filmation Sherwood Schwartz kind of gave them the rights to do the planet episode because if you watch it it's you know they you do see a title saying you know you know created by you know executive produced by sherwood schwartz you know he had a hand in it. <laughs> yes. yes you know he and, pops up and much like rank and bass on the most unusual projects you're just like yeah wait oh it makes sense it totally makes sense <laughs> but also you start seeing these cartoons from another studio that was kind of the offshoot of Hanna barbera which was ruby spears Ruby Spears. Yes. Yeah. They had they a sparkling did. logo or some shit like that. Yeah. And their big claim to fame was Thundar the Barbarian. <laughs> mm. <laughs> Nobody, everybody thinks it's Hannah Barbera. It was Ru Ruby Spears. Joe Ruby and Ken Spears, they were two guys that worked under um, William, you know, Joe, Joe, Joe Hannah and Will Bar Bill Barbera. There you go. There's the confusion. And, it's the and they, they, came, <laughs> they came out with this cartoon that to us was like, Wow, you know, Earth, you know, a comet hurdles between the Earth and the Moon. Earth is destroyed. You know, you know, a thousand years later, you know, there's this, there's like this like tribe. You know, there's like these like you know this like sword, you know, sorcery and science, mm -hmm. and it's like now, now we're start, now you're starting to see everything change around. You know, cartoon wise, a thousand percent. And yeah, when, I, when you get to the '90s, I almost. Half the time, I would think that they were made in the 80s because some of them looked dated before they even came out or they just were essentially <laughs> kind of a knockoff of Ninja Turtles or basically an animated A-team. Like, you'd have weird shit like SWAT cats, and I always, for the longest time, was oh, like, yeah. it's the 80s, right? No, it's a 96, yep. 95, 96 show, but it sure as hell looks like a Ninja Turtles knockoff, you know? 
well, I, have animals I, fighting crime in a giant A-team type spaceship or van. <laughs> <laughs> I think the thing that gets me too is like you start to see a lot of cartoons start to fall by the wayside now because all of a sudden it's too mar- and, much marketing. Yeah, well, what happens is that these little blue people appear on NBC. Oh. The Smurfs, the Smurfs come along and everything becomes it becomes like an explosion. And totally. every and everybody and and that's that's the reason why Super Friends got canned. They couldn't keep up with the Smurfs. Right. It, it's amazing how every time everyone wonders why something falls. It's like when the cool kid, when the popular kid in school steals your thunder, it's hard to break through that ice. Yeah. And and it doesn't Smurfs, matter if it's quality or not. If everyone wants to hang out with the cool kid, it's just it takes them a while to figure out. Wow, this is really toxic yeah. scene. <laughs> but but then not only that, you know, you have shows that come back that are being done like kind of half-assed, like Popeye and Son. Popeye and mm-hmm. Son. There was a really um, cruddy Rambo or RoboCop there a, cartoon. It, and there was a Rambo. There was a RoboCop. It was like Chuck Norris. Norris. Yeah, Chuck Karate Norris. Command. What's the one they got in trouble for? And they were like, okay, we got to pull that character off. Was that Rambo? It really might have been. And it was just Arab like yeah. because they, this is like Rambo is a violent cartoon not meant for kids. And yeah. Rambo and Robocop is a satire, but the general audience thought it was a mindless action movie. So it was just like you're having all of these mixed bags and parents are still getting angry that, you know, before Terminator 2 even came along, just people are buying – toys to violent r-rated movies they don't want their kids to see but they'll let them play the games or watch the cartoons because they just think oh well i I even had pals who would play something like south park or something like but the video games and they're like oh it'll be different than the cartoon i don't want you to see i'm like horse puppy the same thing (laughs) (laughs) well 80 was 83 80 82 83 84 everything starts to change like they like ABC whips out um, Menudo, which was like the big oh, God team, the team yes. group. And remember, they had, and I remember this. They had Monchichi's, the Puppies Adventures, um, <laughs> Pound Pound Puppies. I watched a lot Pound of Pound puppies. puppies growing up, and that was Rubik, weird. How Rubik the Amazing Cube, which was voiced by Ron Palillo. Oh wow! Um, <laughs> then they Dungeons did then and they Dragons. Did, oh well, that's that's gonna be. The, that that's a show that has stuck with me since I was a kid. Yeah, that's and a, I knew like, many people. That's a different side of the equation. Different side of the equation. Yeah. I knew many that's, people who, uh, kind of like with Sonic the Hedgehog or Mario Brothers, if they didn't play the video games, or in that case the board game, that was their introduction to it. I was just like, that is so wild. <laughs> well, you know, they have Dungeon Master, who's like Yoda Adventure, who was like, Avenger or Venge- was it Avenger? Avenger. He was Avenger. Avenger, who was like Darth <laughs> Vader. And then um, there was a there's a guy I know who wrote the scripts for Dungeons and Dragons, and we find out in the end that Venger was Dungeon Master's son. Yes. And we and I swear I saw that I swear I saw that on TV. I swear to this day I saw. Yeah, that. yeah, that was actually an episode, but there was also an unaired episode that was trying to kind of throw everything t- together. And if you can find it, it is on the the complete uh, series of Dungeons and Dragons. Yeah, yeah. and you the, might also be able to find it, find the audio version of it on YouTube. Well, and that's yeah. what I have. We have to thank for early DVD uh, releases because a lot of them would try and get as much uncut material as they could. They always struggled with shows like Hunter or. Uh, Miami Vice live action shows because they just had unfortunately too much commercially available music playing that just unfortunately yeah appeared. yeah but cartoons they didn't have to worry about it they would often you know it's like they just had the theme song then they would just have it kind of on repeat or remix you know well yeah uh, go the ahead, way Tom, I see it, uh, that's fine uh, the the way I see it is the early eighties was more about. And even into some of the mid '80s, it was dealing with more of the cute cartoons. You had your Smurfs, yes, you had Gidlong Gang, you had Shirt Tails, you had the Wuzzles. 
the Wuzzles. Oh, uh, uh, there snorks. was even so something had... Chuck Jones worked on that was like Raggedy Ann and Andy. He would always well, like yeah. do adaptations of stuff based on like it, it was just like how every other year on the World of Disney or on Hallmark special on CBS, there'd be kind of an animated equivalent of, you know, like an American Girl story or, you know, just something that is again, you know. Yeah based on a brand or a toy and if it wasn't a toy then it had to again like you say be a beloved 70s cartoon or a popular 80s movie but it was like you say is like after 83 it just is very unpredictable and then you know reagan type parents start saying oh yeah. our kids are watching too much yeah on tv yeah. that's why i find uh, they, even so funny how even the live action shows are basically going by cartoon logic like Captain Power is basically a live action '80s cartoon, <laughs> you know. Pretty well, yeah, Captain yeah, Power. Is... Sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. Captain Power is like that, but there was also what? Well, well, Captain Power was the ripoff. I thought that was a ripoff because you pointed the screen. Too, it looks so much and... like Power Rangers or something, and it, you're like, "What?" But, Tom, you were going to say something. I, I didn't mean to cut you off. I do apologize for that. Oh, good. That, that that's fine. Um, Reagan was also responsible for the shift in in the cartoons going from having to have a moral and stuff like that, but just turning into 30 or 23 minute um, toy advertisements too. Yeah. That opened, that opened the floodgates for, for a lot of the stuff that I think is still, is still in our. Uh, it ate away at everyone's creativity in a way. Cause like, in a way it's like they almost wanted to have kind of a, uh, voyage beyond to the bottom of the sea or strike star trek type thing where we explore and then at the end we got to fight someone but we can't kill them even though we got all yeah. these, we've ridden ourselves into a quarter we can't not get out of here well, and blow them up or have beat them up and then return them to their island or their planet or what have you. well the, the the story of he-man is very interesting because he-man came out in 83 had to have been at least yeah yeah and what they had wanted to do was they got mattel they mattel wanted to do uh they were gonna do conan the barbarian and mm -hmm. mattel they, they were looking at the toys and mattel got wind of it and said uh-uh this is too violent we can't have this so if you watch this <laughs> also uh lou Shermer and um Norm Prescott come along and say, hey, you know what? Why don't you just, or they rebrand it and say, we're going to name it He-Man and the Masters of the Universe, which is a lot, you know, we'll create all these characters and stuff like that. And Mattel got wind of it, or I think Filmation got wind of it, and said, we'll create a cartoon. Now, everybody gets it wrong. He-Man was not a Saturday morning cartoon. He-Man was a weekday cartoon. <laughs> yes, it was. <laughs> it's just they call it Saturday because it's like they watch the reruns. Yeah it's always on saturdays is like no mm -hmm. we're at work that day look at the programming schedule it's been on every and day. and gi joe was gi joe the ones that's always stick with me after school were he-man gi joe transformers mask yes. and oh. voltron we'll return after these messages do you ever find yourself thinking about who would win in a fight between goku and superman Hi, I'm James Gavsey, and on the Who Would Win show, me and my co-host Ray ignore anything important happening in the outside world and debate fictional battles between characters from comics, movies, and video games. We got a new show every week, and almost always am I the winner. Yeah, <laughs> not true, Ray. In the past, we've discussed such matches as Captain America vs. Darth Vader, Solid Snake vs. the Iron Giant, classic matchups like RoboCop vs. Terminator, and even the Muppets vs. Sesame Street. That one was crazy. So if you're a fan of geek culture and love a spirited debate, check out the Who Would Win Show wherever you get your podcasts or check us out at whowouldwinshow.com. We let things pile up in the DVR. We add them to our queues. We wait for the DVDs and Blu-rays. We time shift. The Time Shifters podcast. Sci-fi, horror, fantasy, superheroes, comedy, action, film, television, maybe some not-so-current events. Find us on iTunes or at timeshifterspodcast.com. Cool thing about Blind Knowledge is we are in multiple countries. We are worldwide all across the globe. 
We are in the US, we are in the UK, we are in Canada, Germany, India, Japan, we're in Australia, y'all. BlindKnowledge.com. Now back to the feature presentation. Dragon Ball Z, One Piece, Naruto, all things that we love, all manga that were originally published in the legendary magazine Weekly Shonen Jump. But not every series can run for 300 chapters and have a hit anime. This is David. This is Jordan. We're the hosts of Shonen Flop. Each episode, we look at manga that ran and jumped that didn't quite make it. We discuss what it did wrong, what it did right, how the series could have turned itself around, and ultimately, was it a flop or not? Run all your favorite podcast apps, and you can find us at shonenflop.com. Keep on flopping, floppers. And Voltron is very intriguing how it's still going and everyone, much like Transformers, has been introduced to like a different era of it each time and likes to debate. And it's kind of that point where it's like, I'm just glad it's still going. I'm glad that there's something where everyone can still come together and talk about the legacy of, and what impact it left on them. But it, it, it does get annoying how, how you even have to explain to people is like, okay, yes, yeah, so these are technically toy commercials, but they work because the writers themselves really are trying hard to actually, even with, I had fun even with Thundercats, which again was basically oh, all yeah, yeah. out of rivalry with He-Man. And I was just like, Hey, it's just fun. It's just it's just escapism. They are in a kingdom. They fight, you know, various uh, witches, Mumra. demons, and wizards. Mm -hmm. and it's just fun. It's just really fun. And there's a reason a live action card movie wouldn't even do these justice. They're just there's just some stuff that should be in just a certain medium. And this is kind of mm -hmm. it. It's just exactly it works well here. Yeah, it, and even the super even the super friends had to evolve. To yes. yeah. for the toy line, the superpowers toy line, and even that very last season of Super Friends, uh, Superpowers Team Galactic Guardians, that had some that was just some awesome animation and yeah. had some pretty deep stories to it. The but fear. it wasn't, yeah, the fear that was a great that, one. I love that one. He also had the death of Superman in that one, yep, that and uh, but. But a lot of it, to me at least, I, I see 80s animation in a, in a few different phases, one of them being that the shows like Voltron were catching on. So we were catching a little bit more of the Japanese influence. And also, um, we also saw that with, a, with an American version, or at least an American attempt to match that, called Mighty Orbots. Yes. Which is still one of my favorite cartoons and Themes to this very day, and you also see that in a little bit in Mask. I think you see a little bit in. Um, you'll see it a little bit in like Thundercats and different like that. But the Japanese influence on animation really started to take hold. <laughs> yeah, and then you, ha and then you had, um, and then you had the offshoots, the the odd ones, the odd ones out like like Rubik's, uh, Cubert. They had Saturday. CBS had Saturday morning Starcade or yes, or Pitfall and Cuba. Oh yeah, Donkey Kong Junior. Uh, what was it? Was it was it Dragon's Lair? No, Space Space Ace, something like that. Yeah, Space Ace. Yeah, it was Space oh. Ace because they had, because they had the the guy who would transform at the most inopportune times. Yeah, Pitfall. Um. Yeah, that was was that an hour? That was an hour, right? That was an hour. It was Frogger? The same, yeah, Frogger was another one, and also along the same lines, but not directly related to it. Or also kind of going back to the Japanese uh, style coming up, pole position. Yeah, that was that. You can see that 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 animation style coming in because that was all DIC. That was that was. Uh, Dick, right? Dick, Dick. Yeah, and yeah. Skinner, uh, who was owned by Hasbro, would would produce the toys alongside the cartoons, and so that yeah. was wild. How they figured out this avenue, how to half the time you thought you were watching the cartoons because they didn't insert the advertisements. You know, every other commercial mm -hmm. break is like, no, you're seeing a separate ad that's been made just for this. You know, exclusive. You know, time shift. Time. Do you zone. know what? Do you know what Star Blazers was called? Star Blazers. <laughs> I, I think I've heard the story, but it's been because, because they went because they because they went to an a, to a men's store to get clothing. No, no, 
<laughs> it was called Battleship Battleship Yamamoto. Yes. Oh and God. Every, and and they they were like they were like we're gonna sell this as Battleship and they're like um, you do realize that Yamamoto was someone who was in World War II, and they're like well, what should we call it? And they said Star Blazers. It sounds a lot better. And they were like, okay, fine. But Star Blazers Galactica. No, I'm just kidding. don't do that. <laughs> but um Tom, you remember Robotech? Yeah. Yes, I, I do. I do recall that was a, on early in the morning on Saturdays, like a, seven o'clock. A decade before, later, uh, yeah. Like uh, Sam's Club would exclusively oh. show like sell VHSs and DVD English dubs of popular animes. And I remember many would that was their introduction to Robotech. And mm-hmm. like you say, it is just so wild how it's like when you, you have the toy uh aisle uh you know cartoons, you got the still the ongoing uh adaptations of po- other popular medium and board games and movies and and then they're still they're still finding that little small amount of time to insert you know compilations of earlier Looney Tunes and Hanna Barbera cartoons with like one mm-hmm. or two new animations and sometimes it wouldn't be unusual to see 80s and 90s dubs of popular 60s and 70s you know Japanese yeah. imports like Kimba the Lion I remember seeing tons of ads yes of that. that was on Channel 11 here when I was growing up Kimba the Lion and uh, being reproduced it just <laughs> gigantor gigantor astro yes. boy yeah we got all we got all that over here you know in new york in new york new, new york because they would they would play it on channel 11 after school <laughs> tom do you remember um do you remember a cart the cartoon um turbo team yes i do i think that was a ruby spirits if i remember correctly yeah that yeah. is that that was one and then they had Goldie Gold and Action Jack. Action Jack. Yeah. Okay. I'm what I I I said to myself one day, I said, you know, I gotta look this up because I kept thinking this show didn't exist. <laughs> <laughs> Nightmare fuel in your imagination. It was like, nope, it exists. <laughs> And it was so weird. I was, I was swearing that Sid and Marty Croft had were sharing something with Ruby Spears. Oh yeah, and you know they kind of fell off the map after the '70s because then yeah, they, they went into they went into um, bankruptcy. No, they didn't go. Well, they went. To, well, they went to bankruptcy when they opened the amusement park. But um, they were doing like TV shows in prime time, like the Mandrell Sisters. Um, yeah, uh, Jeff and Pink Lady. There's also like a Capital Critter or something like that. Um, yeah, ca- uh, ca- I'm not. Ca- I keep thinking Capital Steps. Jesus, I know you're talking about. It was like a home media release, or are they still kind of out there as collector's items. <laughs> they're they're kind of coll- well. The Mandrell sisters, I think Barbara Mandrell owns that like licensing, but the Crofts the Crofts kind of fell off the map. Um in the 80s they were doing like they were doing their prime time shows and stuff like that and if you if we if we look at those shows like everything just started to get like more convoluted more convoluted more uh like you know stuff was starting to, like like kid video was coming up yes um another one that had that had that japanese influence to it yeah because if you look at it, it wasn't like the way it was. It was like more pencil drawing than anything else. It wasn't exactly. like... Yeah, and it switched between the seasons. One was a little bit... I wouldn't necessarily call it more realistic, but it was more realistic than... See, than I think it was season two when everything got super cartoony. Yeah, yeah. And if you watch... Um, there were a couple great shows that I think still stick with me. And I'm going to call him out. The Mental Misadventures of Ed Grimley. Ed Grimley. <laughs> I tell the very excellent joy, I must say. <laughs> oh, oh, she's coming over, I must say. And that had Martin Short, uh, Jonathan Winters. Oh, yeah. And that was around the time. Um, it wasn't much longer after that when freaking Howie Mandel and other people would just dedicate their... We're, yeah, we're just going, jumping in. But 
Um, it had so who, Joe Joe Flaherty as Joe Count Flaherty Floyd. As, as Count Floyd. Yeah. Well, hey, wasn't that scary, kids? Uh, oh boy, you know. Uh, <laughs> so, I would watch SCTV, and I'd be like, I'd be like, I want to wait till Count Floyd comes on, and he'd come out, and he'd be like, uh, but that's another, that's another thing. <laughs> but, um, oh, that, that's no another way. thing. But um, they did Ed, you know, they did Ed Grimley. They did what was the one? Um, Galaxy High, which actually won yeah, a, yes. a, a, an Emmy or a Peabody. Maybe both. I, I would not be surprised, but I even try to tell people what the Peabody's are nowadays, and they, they don't recall it. I'm like, oh, they give out awards, especially to comedy or animated programs or sci-fi, mm-hmm. for that matter. Yeah, yeah. but there was one where they did for, like, an anti-drug one. And it was amazing. You know, I was like, it was this actually is witty f- and it didn't preach to the choir. It was like, hey, you know, I recommend you not do it. And by the way, we're going to entertain you too while you're listening. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Do- uh, what is it? Do- Doyle-, Doyle takes this drug that like makes him super hyper and he begins <laughs> to like, oh, yeah, no, it was heavy, man. It was like, yeah. okay, I'm not it, doing it drugs. It was intense. <laughs> um, I recall some overacting, but it was pretty well done. The one thing that gets me though is like a lot of shows made a comeback, like the Chipmunks made a comeback. Oh yes. <laughs> yep. <laughs> There'd be um, plenty of times where we would be recording programs and half the time it just skipped to the chipmunks. We just recorded over the tapes way too damn much. <laughs> I'm like, you know, this got part of one of those animated and this is when Disney Channel and Nickelodeon would often share each other's properties before they started putting up their barriers yeah. only mm-hmm. showing in um, studio programs unless it's one of those other companies we still have a license with well the thing was was that also cartoons were starting to you know that's where that whole thing like the, you know mr t had a tv show mm-hmm. yeah mr t um, had one it was so wacky and uh, <laughs> You know, they brought back after, and Tom, you remember this, after they did Super Friends, they, 86 or 87, they, Jim Byrne redoes, redoes, uh, the, you know, the Man of Steel comic, and they yes. put him on, and it's the whole, you know, it's kind of like the whole thing where they changed some of the characters around, you know, and I, mm-hmm. I, I, I got it a little bit, but you know, it was like all of a sudden, like all the stuff we had grown up in the seventies was now getting, you know, taken away, little by little. You know, mm-hmm. and you know, it was like we had stuff like the Trollkins, the, mm-hmm. the Dukes mm-hmm. of Hazard had a cartoon. Yes, it, it was like uh, there's an animated counterpart to everything, and you wondered how much of it was well, just they wanted to just share the airwaves, and everyone was like, "Well, we don't got any ideas." Anything I'll, new, so we might as well just share the airtime. Like any unproduced script in the live action that we didn't make use of, let's make use in the animated companion. I'll, I'll give you the greatest idea, the greatest but the worst thing they ever did in the history <laughs> of cartoons. Nice. And Tom, you can call me out and say that's true. Um, Gary Marshall <laughs> is gonna is gonna lose. Um, Donnie Most and 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 uh, Ron Howard, they're leaving Happy Days, oh, and God. he says, "You know what I'm gonna do? Let's make a cartoon of Happy Days." Oh yes! Oh God! Don't. Happy Fonzie and the Happy Days gang, and then he says, "Well, what's the other big hit I have? Laverne and Shirley." Laverne and Shirley. Oh. Laverne and Shirley go in the army and they're bossed around by a pig. And Cindy Williams is on the first season and then she left. And the woman who played Miss Yvonne in Pee Wee's Playhouse, which we have not talked about yet, oh, yes. jumps in to take over the voice. And then he says, Well, I've got one more show I'm going to do. And what's the last show he puts on? Bork and Mindy. Yep. Mm-hmm. And that was, a, that was, I mean, and then, then Fonz and the Happy Days gang went off the air and they had Fonz join the motor pool where Laverne and Shirley were. And like you're thinking to yourself, wait, wait, I don't remember them being in the army with Fonzie what, what, and, and, and Mr. Cool. And what, what, what is this? Uh, my brain, it's going By to fall. By the fun. way, you can actually get these both on made-to-order DVDs. <laughs> so, 
They have them on YouTube. <laughs> cartoon version. Oh, I'm sure they do. Oh, God. <laughs> they, 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 they had... They had Mork Go and ahead. Mindy. I'm sorry. I'm I'm sorry. I'm jump. I'm jumping in every conversation here. I apologize for this. Don't worry they have about Mork, it. They have Mork going back into like he's in high school, and he meets a high school age Mindy and her father, and you know he, he drives around in a car that looks like an egg, and he's got a a dog with like five legs or something. I mean, it's just it was just so weird to watch. Yeah. You know. Poor Donnie. Morris. I'll do you one better, or should I say three better? Pro Stars. Oh, God. Was, that was like a wrestling show, right? No. No, it wasn't. I'm looking it was up. Wayne Gretzky, Michael Jordan, and Bo Jackson oh, animated. Yeah. Oh, shit. Using oh, their, shit. Using their sports-related, uh, oh, sports-related gadgets to fight crime. Yeah. And the thing is that Michael Jordan really literally appeared in like one – even one live, then he also promoted. did some live action stuff, and he, Jordan literally appeared in like one, and that and they kept repeating that one over Wayne and over Gretzky again. But they got didn't even voice himself. That's right. I I saw that yeah. for like a five second, and I just recall it. Just, just like what's going on here? It almost looks like what the a, Mighty yeah, Ducks cartoon they, on Toon Disney, yeah. which oh, was just bizarre because it's like they're actual ducks. I'm like, no, that is not the point. No, no, oh, no, no, no. no. <laughs> I'll go. I'll go one better. Hulk Hogan's Rock and Wrestling, Wrestling Connection, where they yeah. did, and 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 at that time, um, they were when they released it. WrestleMania one had just happened, and they were going to do WrestleMania two, and they had Roddy Piper as the bad guy. And if anybody remembers, Roddy Piper was going to turn what they call a face, which is a good guy. <laughs> so. And Andre was going to be a bad guy, so they completely screwed it up. But you know who voiced Hulk Hogan in that show? Oh God, it was Brad someone Garrett. Adult. Brad. That's uh, right. God. Brad Garrett was the voice of Hulk Hogan, and the guy who played um, uh, Uncle Phil on, on uh, James Avery. Wow. James Avery played the junkyard dog. Shredder, dog-er. man. Jeez. Yes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Missed that dude. It's coming soon. Everybody loves the Hulkster, brother. Yeah. <laughs> I remember they had it. They had it on WWE Network, and when that whole thing happened, where he started like doing racial epithets, it was like they just pulled it off right away. He needed something more infamous than I don't know, uh, Beastmaster Two to star in James Avery Man. Just... Oh yeah, <laughs> I'm surprised they never did a Beastmaster cartoon. Right, it was another one of those. Yeah. All, however cheap they were to film, for whatever reason, it's just like Universal and the other affiliates just said it'd just be easier to just uh, release them to TV or whatever. But yeah, yeah. Like, they did freaking crappy like Highlander and Mortal Kombat cartoons that had no continuity with the current movies or video games. It was just like let's just throw random shit in here and related in name only and oh with Highlander by the way Sean Connery comes back again as Ramirez but it's someone else who sounds like him but uh, once again it doesn't oh. really mean anything because Ramirez is dead long dead and he died when he brought him back again so again he's just still out there in this alternate universe uh, let's, just say, let's just say I have a really good agent <laughs> oh, I'll, I'll just I'll just do this way my cloud my name is Yes, you're, 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 there can only be one, McLeod. Um, one, I'll, I'll take the rapist for 500. <laughs> <laughs> and then, and then everybody, rem- every, and you got to remember that era of 1980s, Star Wars comes to an end. Mm-hmm. So there's More a big rumor. <laughs> yep. There was a big rumor going around. Hey, they're going to do a Saturday morning cartoon of Star Wars. Really? Yeah. What do we mm-hmm. get? Droids and Ewoks. Right. Oh God! Made and made by Novella, who was a Canadian animation firm. Yep. Mm-hmm. Who who did the Star Wars cartoon on the Star Wars Holiday Special Wars in seventy eight? <laughs> oh God! Oh, man. And then Novella released, um, <laughs> released Star Chaser. This the the legend of uh. Warren, remember that <laughs> where where it was, and and I'm I'm thinking to myself, 
I'm watch I watched it on TV and I said, You think George Lucas was on the phone with his lawyers at this point? Because you can't find that thing anywhere. And it was just so weird because it looked just as shocky as the Boba Fett cartoon that played in the holiday special. <laughs> oh yeah. The, what's weird about that is that they had the actors doing the voices in that. And now you look at Lucas film now, they've got, you know, the Bad Batch, the Clone Wars, Rebels. Yeah, you know, mm-hmm. they did they did the clone you know the Clone Wars in that, in two thousand three, that was all, Ginny Tartowski and a bunch of yeah. the other Cartoon Network MVPs. Dave Filoni, mm-hmm. I mean they were they were all, you know. But remember, it starts with Ewoks and Rebels, you know. In all fairness, they it didn't take much for them to one up them because this is like you would even try and buying those Ewoks or droids cartoons or rent them, and it's like it was even more confusing because they would just compile like three to five episodes together without yeah. any correlation and so you're like wait how long is this again oh this is basically a giant record on loop and just <laughs> no designation of what even the time is i'm kind of losing track of what's going on here <laughs> well they used to sh- remember remember our remember we used to have shove stuff shove st- stuff shoved in front of us you know yeah everyone's eight. still by that going by that logic just Anything to keep the kids occupied so their yeah. parents don't have to deal with them for two and hours. We had, and we had those Saturday morning previews where we were all watching to see what show's going to be on, what show's going to be on, you know. And I remember, you know, staying up till about eight, nine o'clock to watch it. And the one year I remember they flipped, CBS flipped because they got, they moved. Uh, Bugs Bunny and Roadrunner to ABC, and yes. ABC I think flipped Superman over to CBS. I think that was ratings. <laughs> yeah. yeah, before we were doing all these crossovers for St. Elsewhere and, and what have you. And, and now riddle me this, riddle me this. Uh, and sorry to cut you off there, uh, but so just like how the Simpsons would make appearances on Sesame Street and Tracy Ullman before they got their ginormous cartoon franchise, weren't there some other cartoons i might be remembering this wrong and just tell me if i'm dead wrong uh weren't there some other cartoons that premiered on peewee's playhouse and then they got their own short-lived continuation or am i thinking of something else you're thinking of something else because i know there was penny yeah yeah, yeah. and like i was like i can never figure out if that but i remember seeing vague images of it especially in like the best 80s cartoon specials i was like I'm pretty sure that was on you know rerun years later on like Fox Kids or what have you. But well, Peter's everyone... Playhouse was so fun to watch. Oh, totally. You know, it was a variety it hour. It brought out the kid and everyone. And exactly, you could watch it. There was something <laughs> much like the Muppets. There was something for adults and there's something for kids, and you never had any just I don't know, just you, warning you, of something that would be too much or just over the top and you're just like no let's all hang out and there's some puppets there's some real people and then there's it's just witty well the thing with this too i loved about it was that you look who's on that show it's phil hartman um lynn marie stewart say apatha Mark lawrence Ferguson. yeah lawrence fishburne lawrence yeah lawrence fishburne cowboy curtis still call him that Will, yeah. william marshall as the king of cartoons Blackula. Yes. And I am the king of cartoons. I am the king of cartoons. Oh. And I'm I kid you not. Anytime I see a green face like demon or something in a movie, I'm always like, that's gotta be Jombie the genie's cousin. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> William Marshall. I'm also gonna do a loop back to another 80s cartoon. <laughs> Spider-Man and his amazing friends. There you oh, go. Oh yeah. He, vo- he voiced Iron Man in the episode yes. where, they, where they got where the spider friends came together for the first time. That was a good oh. recognition of an inside joke. Nice. Know. I did not know he did that. I have to watch it because I had to it I had literally to just came to me when you mentioned his name. It was like, oh crap. Gotta be a YouTubeable <laughs> moment at least oh. by now. Well, here's here's and the you, thing everybody remembers. Oh, I'm sorry. And you could tell it's him. You could, it is his voice. Yeah. And there's even a little screw up in the in the episode where, where the driver, the chauffeur, and Tony's voices swap for one scene. Yes. <laughs> I remember that. 
Oh my God, that's great. So you go from I something that sounds that. really remarkable like this to, there's something wrong. Oh no. <laughs> yeah, so, so somebody in, in AR must have been like, shit, we put the wrong ones in. Crap. You know? <laughs> it's out of sequence. Oh so, shit. <laughs> but if you watch, if you watch Spider Man as Amazing Friends, that's the first time we see Wolverine. Yes. Yes. The X Men. But yes, what man. does Wolverine sound like? Australian. Yes. <laughs> oh, you're dull. Can't throw a piece of fruit. I'm a real like, Wolverine. I'm I'm a... Like, what, what the hell? What the hell is this crap? <laughs> get all these New Zealand and Australian actors to play him in live action for him. Oh, the irony. That was the big rumor. Mel Gibson was going to play Wolverine. If they did an extra, I movies. remember that. I think De Niro was even attached at one point because of his height, and someone watching Cape Fear one too many times. <laughs> <laughs> but that was the one where they had, if I remember, it was Professor X, Colossus, Thunderbird. Yes, there was oh. the one with the maze. Of, uh, they had Sprite. Um, Sprite, which was Kitty, which was Kitty Pride. Kitty Pride. Kitty Pride, baby. And Jean Grey. Did they have and Jean Grey? I, I think they, they had, had Jean Grey. Did they have Cy- They didn't do Cyclops. I know that. They, yeah, that was until like, no. They did do Cyclops. They had they Cyclops, Cyclops in both episodes. Okay. And um, and they had Storm. Yes, but it was Storm the long version episodes. of Storm. Yeah. Uh, fun fact: If you guys ever want some other stories told, you can definitely actually the the writers of the ninety two iteration of X Men are on Twitter and we'll definitely take your questions if you got any. Oh good. Good, good, good. <laughs> I have some things I need to ask them. And, and they keep appearing on the Who Would Win podcast. Shout out. Oh. <laughs> which has some hysterical like uh versus matches often between people from movies, cartoons, video games, and comic books. And they have to always state what version of the character they are using before the fight. And the judge is often a recurring guest, often a famous voice actor. <laughs> and so well, much fun. Here's the thing that gets me. Um, you remember Spider-Man and his amazing friends, but they had a Hulk yes. cartoon too. Yes. And yes, they did. Do I keep thinking Lou Fer- No, Lou Ferrigno wasn't doing the voice. That was the 90s version. Uh, I think Neil McDonald also did a voice as well. Yeah, fame, but that was '90s too. So yeah, I'm not sure which of the seven. I want. I want to say it was the. If I remember correctly, the guy who played Bruce Banner. I want to say he also did the voice of Duke on. on GI Wait Joe. a minute. Give me a minute. Hold on. Hold yeah, on. I think you're on to something because uh, there were a lot of GI Joe people working. Michael on all Bell. The- Michael, Michael Bell. Bell. That's Bell. the guy's name. Michael Bell was the voice of uh, Zan on. Uh, on uh, Super Friends. Super Friends, yeah, and he was also the guy in Mash. If you remember, he's the the the, hel- the helicopter pilot or something like that, where he, he yeah. gives the kids like dangerous stuff, like you know they got to do this stuff. Let me look it up. Hold on. Uh, Hulk cartoon, nineteen eighty two. Okay, sweet. Yeah, I'm gonna look this up because I, I know I know Michael Bell's work. I've heard sometimes the army men would almost look like they were in the GI Joe Corps. <laughs> oh, it was like because well, yeah, like, Marvel like, did a lot of the comics. I think, not mistaken. Marvel had GI Joe's property for like eight nine years. And it's so wild how DC later bought Malibu Comics, and the same thing too is like one of them would be doing Deep Space Nine comics, and the other one would be doing like Next Gen or original series comics, and then eventually it was like Paramount bought the whole property back and sold it to like someone else to do adaptations of. But it was. It was wild how what spinoffs with their other existing medium they were able to do for some time. It's just like, okay, and now the Ninja Turtles are going to fight you know, <laughs> these guys, or the G.I. guys are going to be in part of S.H.I.E.L.D. helping them out with Cobra Commander. <laughs> Hold on, I got it. I'm getting to it right now. Give me a minute. Oh, good. Because I remember that Hulk cartoon, it was like, it shows him like getting trapped in a like in a box with spikes. He got beat up so much on those cartoons. Yeah. Like something that in the comic book iterations and even the movies is like would not even phase him one minute. But for the sake of a cartoon, there's like, well, let's just say he gets captured somewhere somehow. <laughs> he gets knocked out. Yep. Even though this is technically just a giant rock that hit him that wouldn't phase him. Yep. Also, it was Michael also, Bell. 
cool. Man. Yes. <laughs> and <laughs> one more thing that I just, I thought I remembered, then I just checked and verified. William Marshall also played Juggernaut on the aforementioned Spider-Man The Amazing oh, Friends sweet. episode with the X-Men. Yes. I'm coming for you, child to yes. Oh, man. He yeah. had such a deep voice. And, and Juggernaut is just one of those others. They should, like, j- a solo movie dedicated to him would be so much fun just because you just could be so campy. But it's just so wild how anytime they've tried doing, like, other future cartoons and movies of it, they never even bring up the fact that he's like related to xavier (laughs) they're just like "Eh, it's too much he's just a smart guy who busts through things hulk style (laughs) well bob ridgely who played um you may know him as uh the voice of down and dirty duck and he was also in he was in tarzan and they also do duck tells or tarzan voiceovers he, yeah, he did. He was in, he was the voice of Thundar and Thundar the Barbarian. He played the Colonel in Boogie Nights. <laughs> okay, so he did. He did. He yeah. did those. He did that. He did. Um, he was Thunderbolt Ross in that show. That's nice. But he yeah, he was also. Um, he, I remember him in the whole Flash, the New Adventures Go of ahead. Flash Gordon. When that came out, that's incredible. Yep. So, bringing so. a whole new meaning to Ariel Ukla Ride, <laughs> Ukla Lords of Light. It wasn't too, and that was almost around the same time they were doing like spinoffs of spinoffs and cartoons. Yeah. Uh, Darkwing Duck was another one, and it was like Duck, was it Ducktales, Ducktales, Darkwing Duck. It's yeah. just like I would watch those back to back and often think they were the same show. They weren't, but that was just Chip Dale's Rescue Rangers. I yeah. watched a bunch of that. What was the Tailspin. Tailspin, Every, yes. Tailspin, yes. yes. I got them mixed up with Rescue Rangers. I'm like, well, similar. They're, they're, they both appeared on there. <laughs> Tailspin, I thought was really cool because Tailspin, they couldn't get uh, George, whatchamacallit, from the Jungle Book. Right. To play Sheer Sh- Khan. So they got Tony J, who you would know from like a st- like Star Trek. He was always he, he he had that same voice as George Sanders. I do recall the name Tony J and and I remember looking at his uh, credits, but he was one of those like I would never recognize him. He was just he had a high pitched voice and um, He was no he was, he was very sort of uh he was very sort of like this when he talked. Uh, okay, more laid back shit. And who am I thinking? There's another You're time. think you're thinking of uh I mean, you're thinking of Big you're thinking of Big you're thinking of uh Sterling Holloway. Fuck. Okay. Damn. The guy who, the guy who's, Jim Cummings took over the role. Yes, Jim and Jim has just I, I love his narrations. It's like he, he would reuse his, his basically his Tigger laugh and basically do evil voiceovers. He was basically channeling his inner Jeremy Irons half the time. It just seemed <laughs> he's going <laughs> to know and then became the voice for kids wb in the mornings that yep. was great kids wb do you do you right. guys think that like like there was there were some shows that just shouldn't like it, it, there's some shows like we've heard about you know we know about there's some shows i've always said like i remember seeing being advertised in a comic book and this was one that really got me was the young astronauts Yes. This was, this was one that was going to be put on in 80, let's see, 85, or they were going to put it on in 86. I want to say it was 86 because of the 86. The reason why they, because of the reason they scrapped it was because of the Challenger. Yeah. It was going to be a show like Terry, and they were going to be Terry I think and that's the Pirates. Why I didn't hear about it because often yeah. if they, if there was something chaotic. You know, this was pre 9 11 where if they, even remotely detected that something might be too familiar to an infamous incident. They were just like, hey, let's either show it at midnight where no one notices or just, you know, rewrite it a bit, tweak it, <laughs> they had, redub it. They had the storyboards already. They were, I think they shot one episode and then they pulled the plug on it. I will have to look that up. Yeah. And I remember that, but I remember shows that came on like Going Bananas. Going yes. back, I vaguely seem to recall hearing that. I definitely heard the theme song at one point. It was like, <laughs> and that was one of those ones where it was, 
NBC was trying to get back on the live block with things, and they couldn't do it. They wanted that chipmunk. Yeah. Dungeon no, they, they right. wanted to have that Sid and Marty Croft feel of what they were doing, but it was just so mm. terrible. They said, I All think right. that's why I don't recall it. It was like, it was just like, you would get bored, and this is when you're a kid, and you don't have any sense of real uh you know quality so it's like you know something's bad if a cartoon is boring you and the voices aren't well interjected in. or they or the actors are just so b- terrible it's like oh my god mm-hmm. the story like, doesn't um, make any sense it's there was only one time. yeah there was only one guy on that that was really memorable um <laughs> i can't remember his name off the top of my head but was, i think his first name was mark he, he had like black frizzy hair wait a minute he was he was blinking in a in and men in tights he was also on fridays oh yes oh, oh, yeah Friday. okay wasn't he later um, in the west wing i think as like the british ambassador i think yeah but he he was he was also on saved by the bell because i remember he had yes. to play a college he, professor to to have to he have, was always that type he'd be the professor he just he was he, no he was he was always playing like these wacky ass characters and i've well, seen i mean him that's kind of what he is in yeah west wing. mark just, i know it dang i know it but yeah, um, I, I just, want to say it was Blanky Ship or something like that. Mark, oh god, I'm gonna look it up. Now you got, now you got me going. I'm gonna look at the Fridays cast. <laughs> that's that's a show. That's a show that nobody really talks about because nobody remembers it. But oh, I, remember I remember that, it. and I oh. I thoroughly enjoyed it, um, especially because of, especially of the news section for M- Millie Chardoff. Well, that was. Yeah, well, that was the show that um, kind of like Michael Richards, you know, on. Michael Richards and Larry David. Yeah, I'm trying, to think, I'm trying to. I'm gonna look up. The, and there was that, and there was the new show. You remember the new show? Nobody remembers that. Mark Blankfeld. That's it. Mark Blankfeld. Blankfeld. Right? Yeah, because that had Larry David, Michael Richards, uh, Melanie Chartoff. Meredith Burrell, I remember Meredith Burrell from uh, TV shows like On and Off. Um, but yeah, I remember. I remember. I remember him being like like Antonio Vargas. He always put Antonio what? Vargas. And Antonio Vargas. I think so. Yeah. Antonio Vargas yeah. was on that show. Yeah. I wish they had done an animated Starsky and Hutch. To be honest <laughs> with you. Um, well, I think we got to wrap it up. Like they have to stop a guy's. Kid. All right. Uh, All right, but but, but uh, yeah, we, we we can pick this up definitely again next week. <laughs> just some other just oh god, yeah, eighties and nineties ones. But yeah, I gotta do a Mortal Kombat Q and A with the actor who played Kong okay. Chi on Conquest. <laughs> okay, we'll have fun. Uh, th- I'm Tom glad we actually Mark. had a consistent. Yeah, he he should be in one of the group chats we're in. I can. I didn't go ahead. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but oh man, I. I had fun on this tonight. Uh, we, we, we went to town, but yeah. Uh, thank, thank you ever so much. And uh, I will, uh, again, I'm going to get to town on editing these pretty fast. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, we got, and, we, and I'll, tell, I'll, I'll put it on my page that, you know, I've been doing this. I, I actually told people I've been doing this. And Tom, you're, Tom and, and Cam, you guys are great to work with. You oh, thank know. you. Yeah, well, you're always the feeling like, mutual. Follow us on the web on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. The podcast is available on Podbean, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Anchor, Apple, and anywhere else podcasts are available. Feel free to review our show and leave comments on any of those sites. Thanks a million for listening. It's a Jack Review Show.